Good day and welcome to a new video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Heyo and welcome today. Today you're joined by me, Daniel, and we are painting a 90 minute art challenge. Uh, now today I thought of a few topics here and there and I thought I might talk a little bit about drawing inside your comfort zone, um, the ups and downs with that, what's, you know, um, what's good about it, what's bad about it, um, and, you know, also a little bit about drawing outside your comfort zone. Um, so, yeah, you know, <laughs> for me, uh, this painting here is a 90 minute art challenge. It's in my comfort zone because I do draw quite a bit of birds. I do draw a lot of animals um, and that kind of thing. So it's in my comfort zone. It's the kind of thing that I do draw on a regular basis. Um, so yeah, it'll just title this video something like um, drawing, you know, drawing in or drawing and painting in your comfort zone. Um, and, you know, the ups and downs with that, there's obviously the ups with that is that if you always are painting and drawing in your comfort zone, um, you kind of uh, create and draw the same thing over and over again. Um, there is obviously some improvement and things like that that you can get, you know, by staying kind of in your comfort zone. Um, but there's, you know, there's only certain amount of levels uh, that you can get to, you know, this um, certain amount of quality that you can get to um, in your work until you, you reach a point where you're just, you're good at doing that and then, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> from there you should explore, you know, but um, yeah, also the other side is doing outside your comfort zone. Um, this is where a lot of the learning is involved, really, I think. Uh, drawing things you wouldn't really draw, maybe, you know, maybe um, if you draw lots of animals, it's drawing people. Maybe it's the other way around, you draw a lot of people, maybe you draw some animals and landscapes. Um, it does build you, your work up and help you out because, you know, um, as an illustrator, as an artist, sometimes... Um, concept artists and other artists that are out there um, you don't just you know have to draw one thing usually um, depending on what kind of work you are doing sometimes you do just you know create um, characters and that's about it or you might create um, landscapes but it does help knowing, you know, if you, you're a landscape artist, it does help knowing how to kind of draw characters and those kind of things, um, because you may get asked to uh, draw a character in your scene. Um, also, it adds to your, you know, it adds to the scene, the environment. It tells you what kind of um, character lives in this environment, um, as well as the other way around, you know, what kind of environment does this character live in. Um, so, you know, it does help um, going a little bit out your uh, your comfort zone sometimes. Uh, yeah. And with these 90 minute art challenges, um, I definitely, there are a few that I've definitely gone out of my comfort zone. Out of the usual kind of paintings that I would have done. Um, because these are from the 90 minute art challenge on Tumblr and I pick one of the images a week. Um, I haven't really started in any order, I just have been picking one of the latest ones or just one on the page. Um, I thought, you know, I didn't know if I would be doing this too long, I thought maybe two, three weeks. I think it's now been five or six weeks of doing it. Um, I'm kind of finding it easy to do. Uh, <laughs> saves me a little time because I just do one of these a week. Um, and the rest of the week I can work on other stuff I've got going on. Um, I will be working on other stuff 
in a little while I keep saying that but it will be um, shortly for now I'm just keeping on with these nightmare art challenges it's helped me a lot um, build some of my um, artistic skill with some of the um, paintings that I have done some of the background work um, there's been some landscape paintings I've done with in these 90 minute art challenges that yeah you wouldn't usually do this painting here um, it's kind of a usual one or usually kind of draw and paint like birds and animals and things um, but I guess you know a little bit of a different approach in a way um, I've been watching some YouTube videos lately one artist that I was learning from was on Proco.com, a Proco YouTube channel. A guy on there, I'm not sure about his name, I don't fully remember his name, but he's an artist, uh, awesome artist on there, and he, I think he does a lot of comic book stuff and things like that. Um, but he was talking about how, you know, you can really break, um, anything you want to draw up into shapes and I mean that's you know <laughs> kind of standard but he just showed it in kind of a way that was um really resonated with me I guess um you know it, it showed me a lot of how um he can manipulate a shape and what that all is the different stages of being an artist and really broke it down think you know, if I saw that video maybe four or five years ago, I think I would have improved way more dramatically back then. Um, but see, now there's still time to improve on it. There's always time, and it's always helpful to see that you know new ideas and new knowledge out there um, that these artists have to share. It's always good to to see this and um, use it to help to improve the skills you do have now. And I kind of use that in a way to kind of break this um, animal up into its shapes. You know, I, I, I built up the shapes when I started a little bit more. Um, and, you know, I think overall for this painting I did okay. I, I think there are some points where I'm like, hmm not sure um I, I painted it within 90 minutes so you know <laughs> I, I don't think i expect the world out of it because it's you know 90 minutes painting um, which is a reasonable time but i think i did okay you know i got the most out of it i think it's a good point within you know 90 minutes you get um a good grasp out of it you get um good knowledge out of it from from that period of time you could do it longer um, if you want but usually from that period you've got the main gist of the image um, underway uh, you might not have the most perfect painting in the world or that, or that greater painting but you've got the whole gist basically of the painting um, you can obviously take it further if you wanted to spend a few more hours on it or um, you know leave it as is and repaint it do another 90 minute art challenge of it but i kind of feel like within that an hour and a half you get a good crisp of the image and um how to draw it how to paint it that kind of thing the the shading and everything and what's going on within the image you kind of um understand it a bit better within that time where you know spending a long long period of time you kind of to do everything else it isn't exactly the most important you know copying word for word <laughs> kind of a thing um still um you could spend more time on it and maybe one day i could spend a little bit more time on one of these images um but for now i'm happy just doing the 90 minute art challenge and learning from each 90 minute art challenge I do and just leveling up my skill that way I'm slowly doing that which is kind of helping me in a way um, but at the moment you know doing 90 minute art challenges um, is slowly moving into uh, my comfort zone now it's like this place where I'm always doing this every 
every week and um yeah so and but i have done subjects in the last little few weeks that aren't as challenging i guess um so definitely going out of my comfort zone next week with one of the images i'm going to pick something um that i definitely would never paint or never think i'd be able to um attempt at painting <laughs> so i definitely go or something like that um yeah but it's also yeah good to go in your comfort zone when you know you're applying for jobs and um you and those kind of things in your portfolio it's good to to show that kind of thing um, because that's what you, you're good at so that's why you go for that but going outside your comfort zone does really help you um, in the long run and it shows sometimes um you do things that you you don't think you'll do and sometimes you end up liking it you know you end up liking creating backgrounds or painting um all sorts of things that you don't think you would have normally created yeah so this blue uh, jaybird i think that i've got the blue a little bit too blue it needs to be less kind of saturated it's less less bluey um Kind of a thing but yeah i i thought it was at, at this stage looking now it definitely is um needs to be dealt with back quite a bit less saturated blue um but yeah <laughs> sometimes with the decisions you're working on other things um that a little bit more important for me i was trying to get the structure right of this bird as close as I can to this bird I still think looking at now I still think it's a little bit off um, remember this is two times the speed so it's twice as fast just because I don't want to sit here for 90 minutes doing um, a stream I can sit here for 45 ish minutes doing a stream but 90 minutes is a bit much for me um, I usually don't stream too often, I usually once a week um, on my channel here on, on Twitch I, I stream and then I export it to YouTube um, on the weekend and as well as I stream on Twitch every Tuesday um, and I don't usually stream much more than that. Um, uh, yeah, I only stream very little, but yeah, it gets exported to YouTube, so I have two videos that get put up on YouTube each week, um, and, you know, that's a weekly tips video, so that, um, you know, I'm drawing usually animals, um, uh, most of the time, sometimes I draw I've drawn some other things as well. I'm looking at doing hands at some point. I was like, oh, I, I, I thought about doing hands this week, but um, <laughs> it's like, oh, you know, I don't want to completely fail it. Uh, it's a little bit kind of outside my comfort zone. Um, so I have kind of put it off, I guess, but I will be doing it in the near future. Um, it is, you know, there was a video that I was watching about hands, which really broke it down as well, like, um, made it way easier. It's like, well, you know, you broke the hands down into, there's only, like, these cylindrical shapes to it. And there's, you know, so many cylinders in a finger, and then, um, so many shapes to, uh, to the, the palm of the hand. So they really broke that down, so that really is, like, wow you know that that kind of breaks it down and shows me that i can really visualize it in every angle i know that proko um the original proko videos from like six or seven years to draw the hands um and did kind of draw that but that was kind of 
I guess a little bit too boxy for me in a way because it was the usual the palm of the hand as kind of a square rectangular box and then you you um use giant cylinders for the well big long cylinders for the four fingers um from there you add the structure on top where you know the the way that this artist shows it was i'm pretty sure he was on the proker as well or he might have been another artist um, altogether he broke it down a little bit differently so it, it's good to, to see these other artists and how they do it because they might have a different insight um, I, I have a different insight versus some of these other artists out there um, they have a different approach a different way and sometimes their approach might work better for you rather than you know some of these you know, other artists approach um, might work well where you know Proko's you know he said has some awesome videos out there um, and you know he, it's really helpful over the years to, to watch his videos and it's where I kind of resonated with drawing and learning to draw I really watch his videos um, and kind of copied his um, you know, some of us how to draw things over the years and it's helped me to to grow as an artist um, <laughs> but you know some of us other artists out on the channel now um, have helped me too now um, recently which has been awesome to, to see um, it's always great to, to see that it's another thing um, with you know staying inside your comfort zone it's always watching and listening to only the artists you like you know um sometimes it's good to go see other artists or watch other youtubers you wouldn't normally watch or you wouldn't normally see um out there they might be in a different field like animation um concept artists or something completely different from what you're doing 3d animation but it's always good to to see that kind of thing i see on on like bobby chio's channel um and some of these other channels that have guests they not only have you know um illustrators or concept artists whatever their kind of theme is based around their channel is based around but they also have, um, you know, you know, Bobby Shell channel. He's got like illustrators, concept artists. He had film directors. You know, he's all the works on there. Um, it's always good to, to see that um, variety on on YouTube, on um, either even Twitch streamers that are out there. There's some Twitch streamers I've watched in the past that. Um, uh, interesting to watch they do like fan art like Teo Shin um he did fan art back in the day I'm not sure if he's still doing fan art he does some cool work still um and there was other some other artists that were on twitch as well that I did watch back in the day and they were awesome to see but yeah watching um and learning from other artists that you don't normally you know learn from even you know watching actors and some of the um advice that actors talk about somewhat watching some of those videos um and things are really awesome or uh you know how they made things like wallace and gromit and how they made you know some of those things that you know not might not exactly be in the worker field you want to do or um the kind of thing you are interested in, but it's always helpful to see you know i watched many of those um many of those things over the years how they made um dinosaurs and how dinosaurs worked and everything like that to you know how they made you know chicken run and wallace and gromit and um a lot of you know other films and i still you know check them out and um the art of books of some of the games are amazing i watch um 
Adam Duff's channel has a lot of those, which is awesome to see. I, I, I mainly look online. I don't have all the money to buy all the books. I'd, I'd love to, but, um, you know, but just going kind of out of your way. I think that's another comfort zone is going out of your way as well. You know, um, kind of always going about things the way you normally go about things um, is kind of staying in your comfort zone, you know. Um, so going outside your comfort zone and trying new ways to do things um, is always good, you know. You might always normally... Um, Say for me, on a Monday night, I am normally just finishing off, like, weekly tips or recording weekly tips now. Um, where, you know, <laughs> and Tuesday night I'm doing my stream and Wednesday night um, I'm kind of working on... You, sometimes on Tuesday night I do my 90 minute hour challenge and sometimes I do it Wednesday it all depends um, but yeah usually either either Tuesday was kind of out out of my comfort zone for a little while you know I didn't I don't really want to um, stream with my 90 minute hour challenge but at the moment that seems like the the best option for me at the moment um, because it kind of chews it all up in one night, you know, it kind of chews up the uh, stream as well as my 90 minute art challenge all in one night, um, all in one hit, so I don't have to worry, it's just kind of, I do my painting here, uh, you can watch me on my on channel and I kind of talk a little bit, and uh, hardly, you know, while I'm doing these 90 minute art challenges, I don't really talk too much because, yeah, I'm busy doing this 90 minute painting, um, but yeah, you know, maybe just changing those things up and um, moving some things out of your comfort zone, the way you do things. Um, I'm always kind of doing weekly tips on the weekends and doing these on the weekdays. Um, so maybe I need to change it up, do these on the weekend and do the... Um, weekly tips during the week, what well, I've kind of done before, um, yeah, it can work that way, you know, I had tried it, uh, but yeah, you know, changing those things up, you know, maybe, um, I've done where I wake up earlier as well, you know, uh, I've woken up earlier, <laughs> but for me at the moment, that doesn't work too well, um, I'd have to definitely, I would go to bed earlier um, to change that, you know, go to bed earlier but wake up earlier um, to change to that, um, but that doesn't work too well um, for me, it's just that in that period, you know, um, I have to get up and then I've got breakfast and things to do. Um, and then, you know, ready for work, and then off to work, and <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, so that would chew that time up. So at the moment, I do um, after dinner, daughter's got to bed. I'm pretty much on my computer working, illustrating, um, creating, doing other stuff sometimes, uh, chillaxing. Um, so yeah, you know. This this way I do think maybe I could switch it up. It's possible. Um, it'd be a little bit out my outside my comfort zone, but it may um, work better. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have done it in the past, and it has worked um, a little bit well. You know, gotten things done, um, gotten videos ready, got enough painting done those kind of things, yeah, <laughs> it has, it has worked in the past, um, but yeah, just changing up the way I do things, you know, um, I do game 
a little bit <laughs> I do um, watch some animes and things like that a little bit as well um, and you know with those I usually you know relax first and then start painting um, and I have tried it the other way around as well where I, I paint all night um, and then and then I watch my show which can work as well um, so yeah you know changing those things up can help and be beneficial I have changed them up in the past um, and in the future I'll probably look into changing them up again um, eventually you know for now you know it works um, <laughs> and sometimes it is that way what is that thing if it works why change it you know um, but sometimes it may work better if you change it you know so yeah I had some interesting challenges trying to get this to look right I think now looking at it I've got it close I think maybe the beak um, is a little bit off like it, it needs to be rounded off a little bit more um, towards the top Possibly that's what's putting it off a little bit. Um, and other proportional problems are going on as well, I think. Um, but yeah, it definitely was a challenge to try and get those proportions um, accurate. If you saw what I started with, um, you can definitely see you know the improvements I've made over time. Um, I think my color wasn't too, too bad. <laughs> it's like I said, it's a little bit too saturated now looking at it. Um, but, you know, it's terms of, you know, when I started the color, because I've been looking at that in the last, like, quite a few challenges I've done. Um, where, you know, when I start color and when I stop grayscale. And it's quite interesting, so I was watching one YouTuber, um, on a channel. He, he was talking about, uh, how, I think it was, no, it's not, it wasn't Boro. I think it was a... <coughs> A roughly a new kind of YouTuber that's out there <laughs> that I was watching um, but he was talking about how you know going from black and white um, a full black and white tonal painting to a full color um, painting and how you know that works and how he did it you know if it saved him time and anything like that you know it didn't kind of save him time you know it kind of going from full black and white to full color was um kind of hard work you know it wasn't kind of just put a color layer on and you're done pretty much um which I guess you can be at that level. <laughs> no, um, there is a little bit to go on. You know, the black and white does really help you. He was saying it, it does really help you with, you know, if you're learning about tones and getting the tones right, it does, you know, get that right. But then you do have to translate it from that tonal study to full color rendering um so it you know it kind of saved him time just to do it full color <laughs> rendering um so it's kind of good you know you just kind of see that you can uh just do full color just go in full color but you know going back um definitely years ago when i was doing tonal studies when i learned a bit more about tonal studies um 
it definitely did help a lot and it has helped a lot and I've done it for so many paintings where yeah, I definitely start off with the tonal study first, try to get that as accurate as I can and then go from there to colour um, the best I can. And you know it has from going from black and white to colour um, it might have taken me longer than it did than it would have going from a, a drawing to full color painting um but however you know i think using black and white tonal study does help me to um get things a little bit more closer to the tones um yeah yeah, definitely looking at it now, I'm like, oh, it's really too much, too much blue in there. Um, it's definitely, in the actual image I'm looking at, less blue. Like, you can vaguely tell it's blue, um, where it's my image, it's definitely blue, <laughs> you know? It's more of a grey beak, um, and things like that are going off. There's too, it's too colourful, I think... Um, that is what's making it look a little bit more kind of cartoony. I think trying to um, understand that a little bit better is one of the things. I think that with this image here, I think that is what I'm getting out of it a little bit more is the, you know, that color um, saturation, <laughs> trying to get that saturation right is what I failed at, um, but since I failed at, I'm going to try in one of the next images, make sure, you know, I get that saturation right. I think that, you know, that's the way I definitely learn, you know, from failing at something, be like, oh, okay, yeah, I completely failed at drawing a, ha a hand, or completely failed at drawing that. How do I actually do this, you know? How do I you go back, go back a few steps, and just, you learn from it like um, much more than you would have if you didn't make any mistakes you know um, you learn way more that way sometimes um, so you know having mistakes there you always make them um, and it's good to, to make them and, and learn from them yeah um, another thing is uh, comfort zone within the, the videos I make um, you know, lately, I have kind of been doing the same kind of thing, drawing a ladybug, drawing a horned beetle, drawing a duck, you know, it's all very similar, um, so, you know, I have tried to go outside of that a little bit, Try, I'm trying to do um, a few things a little bit different, as well as maybe some of the topics I talk about, possibly, I uh, definitely would be interested in having more artists in, as I keep saying, um, at the moment I am kind of busy, so it's hard to, to arrange times with the artist and, and talk to them, and, um, yeah, get them in, but definitely, in the close future <laughs> definitely in the next couple of weeks so i do have a week off um not next week but the week after where i'll be able to just like fully focus on um painting for a few days that week um as well as you know um other things that i can do around the house um that will mean eventually you know because if you get other things around the house done like the washing the the dishes the you know all those things so you get all those done um it means there's there's more time to paint and more time to spend you know with family there's family time in there as well um all these things that are going to happen eventually in that in that week um but that means that i will have some time so within that week um, hopefully <laughs> that will give me enough time to hunt down a lot of artists and try and to get a few artists in in my channel 
um, and make things a little bit easier, you know, um, with that week, I'm definitely going to use it to try and get ahead, you know, I've been probably a week or so ahead at the moment, you know, um, but that's always good because it means that I don't have to stress so much, you know, excuse me, on the Sunday night or whatever that, you know, I usually want to finish my weekly tips. I don't have to stress so much. Um, it's kind of good and positive with that though because if I'm not stressing out so much, I don't get too much done. So <laughs> I'm just kind of slowly doing it. Um, but also it means I'm not rushing it as well. I'm, I'm trying to do the best I can with the drawings. Um, so, but I kind of want an in-between, so I'm definitely going to look at um, creating better deadlines, I think. I think that's a thing that might um, help me in pushing forward a little bit further, is setting a little bit more um, deadlines for myself. Stricter deadlines, you know, I always... For these videos, I always have a, a deadline of Tuesday morning is when I want the video to be, uh, you know, the weekly tips to be up on my YouTube channel ready for, um, ready to be watched and everything like that. Um, and these streams here, you know, I usually want to get them done Saturday night at the latest. Uh, last big week was a little bit later, as I, as I said. Um. And welcome in you guys if you're coming to the Twitch stream. Um, yes, this is live, you know, I do this live and then I export it. Um, you know, I do then export to YouTube. Um, but yeah, you know, I try to, to get that done. So, I mean, with that deadline though, with, you know, deadline trying to have it uh, ready for putting up on YouTube, um, that seems to be pretty good, getting it done by Tuesday, it's always pretty much done by Tuesday, the latest Tuesday night <laughs> has been my latest, um, but yeah, definitely Tuesday morning is usually the deadline for it, and that's been good, now I've been, um, it's pretty much been up there on Monday night, ready for showing on Wednesday, you know, when it releases, um, as well as these, week, these, um, videos, I think with these videos, I usually try and get them exported by Friday, um, usually once I've done painting it, now I do the first export, so that's where I export the whole video, um, the hour and a half video, I just export the whole recording of it, and then I put it into HitFilm to then speed it up twice as fast. Um, so I do the first export on the, the Tuesday or Wednesday night when I've painted it, when I've finished painting it. So I think with that um, export, I do want to the day after, the night after, or the day after, try and get that ready for hit film and export it because that does help um i can do it worry about other stuff um on usually i i worry about it on friday for exporting it and yeah it depends but usually i worry about it on friday that i get it sussed and sorted on friday so but if i sort it earlier if i sort this video to be exported on on tuesday or wednesday I wouldn't have to worry about so much that, you know, um, but yeah, pushing those deadlines, especially with the weekly tips, pushing it to Sunday night again, uh, where I have to get it all, you know, ready for talking over by Wednesday, by Sunday night, um, and if I've talked over it, it'd be a bonus, um, usually it's ready for talking over by uh, Monday at the moment um, and I'm talking over it on Monday night so that's kind of where I'm at at the moment so I want to push that back a day to Sunday 
and that would give me the Monday night to do a few things here and there, um, as well as the um, that night to also get ready, get prepared for if I'm going to be painting this on Tuesday, get that all set because it, it does take um, probably five ten minutes prep work for it. You know, all I have to do is find the image on Tumblr and then um, put it onto Photoshop and then set up my Photoshop painting file, uh, which I do the, all that, which takes me maybe five or ten minutes, maybe a little bit longer, but um, if it's all set up and ready to go, then I can just start on my 90 minutes um, with no hassles, you know, so... That's something I'll look at too, making that deadline as well. So possibly looking at pushing those deadlines um, outside of my comfort zone. You know, where I'm not so relaxed, but I'm not so, um, you know, a fine point. And it's going to be some fine tuning. And it's always fine tuning, trying to find you know, something that works and um, works really well and, um, everything like that so yeah well thanks for tuning in if you tuned in um yeah shout out to you watching the twitch stream uh sorry i didn't get back to you but um uh, yeah i've been chatting about this this goes onto youtube so yeah. um it's been me drawing this 90 minute art challenge it's an interesting bird. I don't think he evolved from turtles. <laughs> but, um, anyway, it's an interesting bird. I had fun drawing it. Um, looking at it now, it's not too bad. There are some things that I want to work on. Definitely saturation um, is a new kind of thing I want to, to uh, develop on. I guess it's not my comfort zone, so I really want to go out of my comfort zone and, and try that saturation and really play around with that a little bit more. Definitely in my next paintings, 90 minute art challenge. Um, and that's another good thing is that 90 minute art challenges, they can give you your comfort zone and they can um, offer you a learning curve and go into a few trial and error things sometimes because you're not so fast. You know, these are just a 90 minute painting so you experiment sometimes about how you're painting it so next week I definitely will look into saturation um, and that kind of thing awesome uh, hopefully you let me know down in the comments um, what your thoughts are if you stay in your comfort zone if you go out of your comfort zone anything like that I do appreciate it. Keep drawing everyone, keep creating, and see you in the next video.